probably one of the most useful and I, I dare say exciting new features of Excel 2016 is the ifs function, IFS. And this seeks to resolve some of the problems of nested if statements and how clunky they are. We spent some time talking ab about in other videos how clunky if statements can be and how nested if statements rather and how when you're sort of combining those together it's hard to figure out where the parentheses should be closed and where the comma arguments belong. And so I'm going to go through a simple example to show you the power of this new function and what it improves on with, in terms of the traditional approach of doing if statements, which is nested ifs. So here we have a very simple income statement. You don't really need to know accounting or anything to understand this, but here you have a company that generates revenues in 2013, 2014, and 2015. So these are the last three historical years. You're going to try to forecast their profits into the future. So you have revenue in the last three years, cost of sales, direct costs in the last three years. The gross profit is basically the net revenue off of that. And then you have operating expenses, things like administrative and marketing expenses. And then you get down to operating profit. All right, and then below I've got some assumptions in terms of what, uh, what are going to be assumptions, but these are historical ratios. The revenue growth in 2014 was 8%, then it was 3%. Cost of sales margin was 34%. In other words, the cost of sales divided by revenue, that's what that means, and on and on. Operating expenses divided by revenue was 8% and then growing a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some forecasts. So going forward, I'm going to say the revenue is going to grow at 3% every year. And I'm going to forecast the actual dollar amount of that by taking last year's, last year's numbers and growing by 3%. All right. And now I'm going to do the same thing with cost of sales margin. I'm going to just, I'm going to say cost of sales is going to be 37%. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply that. I'm going to say, hey, that's what this is going to look like going forward. I'm going to copy and paste gross profit. And I get down to operating expenses. I'm going to copy and paste the formula, but I'm going to leave this line blank. This is the one where I'm going to build an if statement in and show you how the ifs improve on it. So let's say that with the operating expenses, I want to be a little bit more sophisticated rather than just having one way to forecast. I want the user to be able to select what's called a driver for operating expense forecasts. I want the user to select from several options of how to forecast. One is to apply last year's operating expense margin. So that one's simple. Let's say I just want to apply last year's operating expense margin. So my forecast is that this current, the forecast period operating expense margin will simply be last year's. That's easy. Take revenue, multiply it by, oops, where am I? Take revenue, take revenue, multiply it by that forecast, and you get what you expect operating expense margin, uh, what you expect operating expenses to look like. So here, the user selects one, that's what you want. But I want the user to be able to pick from one, and if they select two, instead of applying just last year's operating expense margin, we use the last three years average operating expense margin to frame our forecast for operating expenses. Okay. Well, in that case, I just need a simple if statement. Okay. If this user is selected one, which is last year's operating expense margin, then just do what you've already done. Just take E14. But if they don't have one in there, that must mean that they have the other one, two in this case. We've only got two arguments at this point. So take the average of the last three years, and you should be good to go. Close your parentheses, actually, and you're, and you're done. So again, user picks one. It takes the operating expense margin and calculates operating expenses that way. So user selects two. That's, again, applying last year's three years average. And now I've got a third one. Let's change this to apply last two years. Now let's say I've decided that number three should be something in the middle. Take the last two years average operating expense margin. So if the user selects three, I want it to be a little different. So now I have to make before Excel 2016, I had to do something of, like this. If H2 equals one, then E14. Else, then I have to put in another if statement here that says, hey, if this equals two, then take the average. Otherwise, you got to close out. Otherwise, you want to take the average. You have to find the comma right in here. And then you say, take the average of the last two years. I got to close out parentheses. You see, I, I screwed up the formula. I actually am missing a parentheses. I got to click yes. And now, Let's see if, if it all worked out. I've got one gives me 10.9%, two gives me 9.8%, three gives me 10.3%. So now I've got these three approaches and I've got a nested if. 
Now, what happens in practice, many of you probably have already experienced this, is if you have even more conditions and you're sort of wedded to if statements, a lot of people really are more comfortable with if statements than other tools that Excel have has that makes things easier. We spent a lot of time in other videos talking about how various lookup functions make this generally easy so you can avoid ne nested ifs. But in reality, a lot of people still end up using nested ifs uh, all the time. And so this is what you, have to, what you had to deal with. How do you improve on this? That's the ifs statement. So the if statement, again, only available in Excel 2016, basically actually just says, just give me all these logical tests. And if h2 equals one, value if true means I just get a, I want this one, right? Then logical test again, h2 equals two. It's much more logical now. What's the value if that's the case? Then it's just the average. There's no parentheses to worry about. There's no nested ifs. Then, if h equals 3, but you don't actually need an h equals 3 because this is just a simple nested if, you just need to say that the logical test, uh, test evaluates to true. So this is the trick with these the new ifs function. You just say true, and then say what you want if that argument evaluates to true, and that is the average of the last two years. And you close yourself, and you are good to go. So now you have the exact same result but it's so much easier. So hopefully those, uh, you can see how, what an improvement this is over the nested if statement. This becomes incrementally better the more nested ifs you're using. You just, it's much harder to screw up the formulas here. The only new wrinkle with these ifs is to know that the if false condition, there's no longer sort of an if false. You can still use if. Notice if you go if, there's an, a value if false. There's no such thing. Instead, you just have to sort of do the final argument, which is, Logical test three is just true. So this evaluates the true, and this becomes the equivalent. The final argument with true as its logical test becomes the if false uh, argument. Okay? So hopefully that was helpful, and thank you for listening.